Hello, hello, here in New York City at the 2023 Sports Content Management Forum. Christian Renette is here with Sports Video Group. Riot Games is doing a hell of a lot in this side of the industry and a hell of a lot in general. And I'm very happy to be speaking with Ian Owen from Riot Games. Uh, Ian, what's going on, man? Good to see you in person. And uh, how's today so far? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it sounds like you could just talk for me since, uh, since we're doing so much. Uh, we are doing a lot. We are doing a lot, Christian. It's a, it's a, it's an exciting time. Um, obviously, last year here I was at SVG working for somebody else, and uh, having a great time working at Notre Dame. And now I've moved on into this esports world, and I'm learning a lot about it as I go. Uh, I definitely come from a pro sport background, college sport background, and now here I am working in esports, and it's a, uh, it's a lot to learn, sure. but. We have a lot of exciting stuff going on, and it's just exciting for me to be here and be involved with all these other great sport leagues and uh, broadcast partners and all kinds of things. It's a really exciting time. Well, thanks for coming here today. Uh, I know you traveled far, uh, but let's dive into that transi transition a little bit. Uh, like you mentioned, you were with Scott and the University of Notre Dame in the past, and now you made the, the transition over to Riot Games. Um, Talk about that learning curve, right? You're talking about Notre Dame, who's usually doing traditional stick and ball sports, if we can call it that way, and now you're doing more video games, more kind of competitive esports gaming. Talk about the, the change and uh, what the learning curve is like for you. Abs yeah, that's that's big, been the huge challenge. Is I've come from uh, I, being a big basketball guy, a football guy, trying to learn a little bit of hockey while I was in South Bend, and uh, now I'm in. Uh, Esports, which consists of so many different things. I mean, I was actually talking to a few guys here at the conference, which is what this is about, and uh, I was realizing they, they said, "Oh, it's like all of your games are different sports." And I'm like, "Wow, that's a really good way to put it." Like, I had 26 sports at Notre Dame. I only have two right now at Riot for the moment, and uh, that we are covering as an esports level thing. Uh, we're trying to build up a few more, but. Uh, it's, it's different, but it's not as different as you might think. And that's, I think, kind of a key thing that makes this so valuable and this connection uh, between the traditional sports and the upcoming esports world. Uh, we, we have our athletes, you know, we have our events, we have our matches. As uh, Scott just said to me, he's like, and now, and now you're year round, you don't get even any time off. And right. I'm like, that's exactly right. Yeah. Our, our, our leagues are running all the time and we're worldwide which is a big difference for me as well. I come from this, uh, you know, whether it's working for the NBA or working at uh, Notre Dame, I was in a, a singular location, right? That's where everything, we, sure, we had things going on other places, but there was this central locus of uh, activity, if you will. And now, wow, we have offices all over the world. We have events going on literally all over the world simultaneously sometimes. It gets to be a big challenge. And that's where our striker, uh, facilities are coming right. into play uh, you know i have to hit that that uh, topic for sure it's a very exciting time in striker right now which we'll talk about in a second but but uh yeah it's it's a learning curve but it's more similar than you might think and it's interesting like just listening to paul kelly talk about iptc he and i've been talking about these standards right. and trying to bring these things together and it, it's it's fun it's a challenge it's a new challenge for me you're talking about obviously you, know, you don't just have the United States you're doing other things in other continents and other countries and that's what brings us to Project Striker you have Seattle you have Dublin Ireland can you bring us an update about where you guys are in the process what's open what's too open and what may happen in the future <laughs> yeah what's too open <laughs> uh, no no Dublin has been open since the beginning of last year since 2022 uh, has been chugging along and they have been doing a fantastic job covering all these events worldwide we still have all the worldwide events we have one striker right now so they are kind of the guinea pig we don't want them to think of themselves like that but they're helping us find new things that we can do better uh, a big big part of my job that I talk about a lot is yes I'm I'm bringing things to Seattle that are working but I definitely want to bring things back to Dublin from Seattle once we get it fixed I talk about it a lot it's a, a single striker sure. approach you know it's just striker it's not striker Dublin is this striker Seattle is that um, but we're, we're getting Seattle uh, set up right now. Uh, we're hoping that it's going to be able to cover some uh, some events in kind of a shadow capacity towards the end of the year so that we can get practiced on how to help Dublin. And then once we hit 2024, we're going to have a lot of regional leagues and everything come online all at once uh, because the strikers are taking on a lot of those regional events in addition to the global events. So we have a lot going on, and we're going to need both strikers yeah. and maybe even more, but I will – 
I will abstain from saying more about future strikers until I am told I can do so. Awesome. You'll plead the fifth. Uh, very much looking forward to covering those when they do eventually open. Um, let's take it back to today, and I'll leave you with this. My boss, Jason, likes to ask this question on his panels. Hey, uh, we're talking about what's going on right now, but what's going to happen in, in the future, especially on this side in sports content management? Wh what do you see us talking about and discussing at next year's event? Well, I mean, we'll still be talking about on prune cloud. We'll still be talking about all the old favorites. I think um, one thing that we started the day here with that I thought was pretty interesting is um, eliminating logging, right? Eliminating human logging. And as a, you know, it makes me sad. I'm only 35 and somehow I remember this old ancient time when people were typing in the box. I don't know, it, feel, it feels like it was ages ago. But we are having to do that because simply the content stream is so huge that there's nothing we can do about, we have to find other ways to get metadata tagged onto assets so that people can find it as soon as possible. And I think one of the things that I see coming that I'm really excited about is being able to pull game data. Uh, we kind of started this at Notre Dame, you know, interview Scott, he'll tell you about how that's going, I have no idea. But we are, I'm in a, I'm in a fortunate position in that world because we can pull all this information out of our APIs. Our whole, our whole event is taking place in a computer on the internet so we can pull all this information out and we're trying to assign it and my coworkers are doing incredible stuff that I'm really excited about and I need to mention to Jason maybe we can show it sometime uh, we're doing incredible stuff pulling information out and doing the tagging so that our media manager kind of jobs the jo the role that we have because we don't have very many media managers right. but the role that a lot of people fulfill of filling in all this metadata can get a lot easier. They can train the machines, they can check and QC and make sure things are done right. But we simply are never gonna have enough loggers to cover all these events. So that's kind of what I think is coming next. How do we apply metadata using AI and machine learning and all that, and other t other things, other tactics, things right. that I think I think people will be coming up with more new ideas in the, in the near future. Definitely, it's, a, it's an interesting time and chapter in this part of the industry for sure, and I'm sure we'll have a lot to discuss. Maybe on this stage next year, maybe at another pro, uh, a venue, but we'll see. Uh, Ian, thanks for taking the time. Hope you enjoy the rest of the event, uh, and hope to chat up soon, thanks. Thank you, Christian. Ian Owen here from Riot Games here at the 2023 Sports Content Management Forum. For many of you like this one, Ian and the rest of the crew here in New York City, please head over to our website at sportsvideo.org.